Hey guys, it's a steaming pile of ship here, and in today's video I've got the long-awaited HMS Hood, the premium tier 7 British battleship, well, battleship in the game. In real life, of course, it was a battle cruiser, but it is classified as a battleship in World of Warships. I'm going to apologize in advance. This replay really isn't all that great, and as you can see in chat, um, it, it's an okay ship, as I was telling the enemy team. It's not great, but it's not bad either. And so this is a replay that I had, one of the better ones that I've had, where you can kind of see some of the advantages of the ship and some of the shortcomings. We're headed off towards Alpha. And one of the things you see me doing immediately here is I'm already getting shot at. And that is one of the things about the ship that it's kind of important that you stay angled without going bow on. Uh, we'll see later on in the video where, or wait, later on in the replay, I'll have some pretty cool moments where I'm just bouncing shells off harmlessly off the side of my hull. Uh, but then you'll also see me taking large chunks of damage basically straight through the bow. And that's because the bow, I believe, is only something like 25 millimeters thick. So it gets overmatched very easily by most of the guns that battleships have at this tier. We're going to take a few shots at the Alba right here. And you saw something bounce right there. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure who that was. Um, but we're taking some shots at the stationary Alba. And we... Mm, not quite the reward I would have liked, but at least a hit is a hit. One of the things about the Hood's guns, because they're very similar uh, in appearance to Warspite, but they actually kind of perform differently. One of the weird things about them is, to me, they kind of seem almost like they are sort of a, a battleship variant, almost, of the Royal Navy Cruiser's armor piercing. I generally don't really get citadels against battleships, but I'll get these weird uh, 20 or 30k salvo, yes 30, um, 30,000 damage salvos once in a blue moon. Uh, but I, I, it's not uncommon to get salvos doing 20k, and it's just normal penetrations, regular pens, overpens, things like that. Uh, I, I think it's kind of... I don't really know how to describe it. it. They just feel like they do more normal damage, or that it's easier to get normal damage with these guns, but harder to get citadels against other battleships. Now, cruisers, as long as they're you know giving you broadside, uh, you, generally speaking, don't have any trouble uh, getting citadels against cruisers. So let's see if we can get one right now against this New Orleans. One of the things about this ship, dispersion, not the best. As you can see right there, we aimed pretty much perfectly, but unfortunately, our Jesus said no, and every single one of those shells missed. The Warspite, I believe, gets 2.0 Sigma, which means pretty good uh, accuracy. You don't have a lot of dispersion, vertically speaking, um, which, which is really important when you're trying to hit those citadels. Let's try again here. He's getting fairly lucky, and I hit the island, which is unfortunate. And that was a much better salvo in terms of the actual Sigma value. Uh, it, it was shining on us a little bit better there, favoring us a little more. Uh, but while the War Spike gets, I believe, like I say, 2.0 Sigma, I think the Hood only gets something like 1.7. So you do struggle in the accuracy department. We don't want to go around the corner here. You've kind of noticed I pretty much just stopped right on the side of the island. There was a Fubuki there, uh, as well as an enemy cruiser, I think, too. So I really don't want to be anywhere near that. And again, my aim wasn't the best right there, but you could easily see how the inaccuracy of these guns caused me to lose out on a little bit of damage. I probably could have finished that guy off. Anyways, we're going to start finally giving it a little bit of throttle front. This Leander here is almost giving me broadside. I want to wait and see if I can get a better angle, better shot on him. But he's almost dead at this point, and I think he's probably going to die. Uh, is it worth going for him? Nope, anyways. 
I figured someone would take him out, and I didn't want to waste an entire salvo on him. Battleship greed right there. Uh, but let's see what we can hit this Byron for. And there's an 8,000 damage volley. Not the most amount of damage. Again, you can easily get, you know, 16,000, or, or, well, 15,000. I don't know why I said 16,000. But it's, it's not uncommon to have, you know, 15,000 damage, 20,000, sometimes even 30,000 damage done just with normal penetration. Now you saw me eat a torpedo right there and one of the things about the maneuverability of the hood because that's a huge thing this is a battle cruiser so it was obviously built there 11,000 just three regular pens on a Colorado I, I don't it hmm I guess what I'm trying to say with that is the uh, the guns just seem to get normal pens easier against battleships than bouncing or getting uh, citadels. I rarely get citadels against other battleships. It's kind of weird. Uh, rear turrets will fire them at this Bismarck. But going back to the maneuverability, the ship really does suffer in terms of actual turning circle. You do have a decent amount of speed. However, you really lose out, like I say, in turning circle. Rudder shift is okay, but dodging torpedoes can really be a chore when you're as big of a ship as the hood is. Uh, you're also fast, so you do have to slow down more if you want to try and, you know, do the slowing down to throw them off and juke them or whatever. Um, it's a little bit harder in this ship. She does feel fairly responsive, though. It's kind of weird. It's... I don't know. And there was 11,000 against that Bismarck right there. And let's see. I tried to angle against the North Carolina's shots, but he hit me mostly through the bow there, right before where the belt is. I don't want to be in the range of the Bismarck secondaries because he's just going to permanently burn me down, essentially. So I'm kind of running away from him. Uh, this ship really isn't a ship that you should be brawling in. It's much better used as kind of a support battleship. Worth noting about the hood, uh, if you've played the War Spite, you know that the War Spite has a ridiculously powerful heal, which gives you a lot of hit points back, and I think there's something about it that uh, it even heals Citadel damage a little bit better. Um, that is not the heal that you get on the hood. You get, like, a, I guess the normal battleship heal. But you also, instead of having the War Spite's really short duration damage control you have a normal damage control too so personally I think I'd rather have the better damage control I'm not quite sure salvo downrange at the Bismarck he's fairly angled I wasn't really expecting anything uh, his secondaries are starting to open up so we're trying to again get out of the way of those but I really don't want to round this corner here with complete broadside to them so we're gonna try and Take out this cruiser so we don't have the fire threat, maybe. Or hopefully he'll get destroyed by someone else. No, it looks like we're going to have to take the shot. Um, but I really don't want to get set on fire or anything like that. Or more importantly, give my citadel to the enemy battleships over there. And of course. <laughs> now, we're about even with ships in terms of score, but we need another cap. We did just kill two more of their ships, um, but there's still quite a lot of hit points on the enemy team left, so we do have to watch out. And this is one of the reasons why this game really doesn't have a lot of damage to it. Uh, I was talking about it a little bit at the beginning. The, I just didn't really have uh, enough time to rack up any more. Taking some shots at the Bismarck, we'll use our heal. And let's see what he rewards us with. And there, 22,000. And nothing with a Citadel there. They're all... And of course he's a German battleship, so we're not expecting a Citadel. But that was a lot of damage considering that was, I think, six regular pens, something like that. Bismarck did just take out our last remaining destroyer. So he's keeping here. He's been keeping uh, the score fairly, fairly close together. Uh, again, we do need to get a cap or start killing these guys quickly uh, before they really open up and maybe run away. And our Colorado's about dead, so it's really neck and neck at this point. 
And there, Colorado, or excuse me, North Carolina. You're not really expecting in many battleships to get damage like that uh, from a normal salvo, but I find salvos like that where you just rack up huge numbers to be fairly common in the hood. Now, we do need to make some sort of a push, so I am trying to angle towards the enemy battleships here. Again, you don't want to go full bow on, but you want to show the belt of it. Uh, hood, the enemy hood has not, or didn't target me, so I'm going to try and get the rear turret swiveled around. And we're going to go around this island. And there's another one, 11,000 right there. It's... It feels sporadic, I guess, the damage in this. It doesn't feel quite like you're rewarded in a typical battleship sort of way. Like, I don't know, it's really hard to describe. Maybe this is just confirmation bias. I haven't heard anything specifically uh, confirmed by any of the developers if the guns do act kind of like a battleship variant of the Royal Navy cruiser AP, but it just feels like they do. Of course, you do have a chi on this ship, and I have seen a lot of people slinging it before. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I had like two or three games in a row where hoods were just shooting a chi at me. Speaking of a chi, you do seem to get set on fire quite a bit in this ship. If you didn't catch earlier, I was on fire quite a lot. Trying to show as much angle as I possibly can. Again, since you can't really go bow tanking in this ship, um you do kind of have to look around and really position yourself better than you normally would uh, against other battleships. If I was like a Yamato or an Iowa right here in this sort of situation, I would just go bow on like I'm doing right now. I was really trying to dodge, not so much angle. Um, but I would have no problem bouncing these. But because I have such weak bow armor, I kind of have to show just the belt and bait the enemy ships into shooting that. And that's something that I think a lot of people probably don't really like about the ship because it is such a change up from normal battleship uh, playstyle. I really want my uh, teammates to kill him because if they don't, he's going to have a good shot at my broadside. And we are pushing in at this point because uh, there isn't a lot of time left we really have to kind of make a play at this point the Otago back there is doing his best but he can't really tank and the New Mexico is two tiers lower so it kind of falls down to me and I'm hoping the New Mexico will follow me and be able to give me a little bit of help here but realistically it does uh, come, when it comes down to it I have to be the one leading the charge Fortunately, I think he hit me in a superstructure a little bit there. That was a fairly large salvo. Uh, the secondaries, speaking of the secondaries, I've been talking about the Bismarck secondaries, which we all know is really, they're really great. Uh, Hood secondaries are, well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're pretty trash. Um, I think the most secondary hits I've had in a battle was maybe 30. And you see how we bounced right there. I think a lot of shells there. And finally... Someone finishes off the, uh, the Bismarck. But realistically, the secondaries on this ship are trash. And right there, that was what I was talking about. Had I stayed pointed towards the uh, enemy, or well, had I stayed pointed towards where I was instead of turning like I did, there was a very, very solid chance that I would have bounced those shells instead of having them... I go straight through the bow, but uh, as you see in chat, I'm telling the enemy team, they are asking about it earlier in the beginning of the game, she's got no bow armor, but her belt is surprisingly good. And that's pretty much the way to describe the armor on the hood. Uh, anyways, there's really not a lot of point in watching the rest of this battle. Uh, well, it's going to be over anyways soon, but we'll just go ahead and skip to the results screen. So, I'm not going to lie, I hope this is honestly the most boring game that I ever put on my channel, because really you didn't see a lot going on. Um, again, nothing special. I hit one Citadel hit, and other than that, I just hit a bunch of enemies, and that's kind of how it goes in this ship. I really don't feel like it's that special, 
Um, I just kind of feel like it's another tier 7 battleship. It's it's fun to play, but it's really hard to put a, like, I guess put words to it, really, would be the way to put it. It's it's not the best ship. It's not bad. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, we've got things like the Belfast. That's a great premium. You know, very, very powerful ship. Uh, we have the Otago, you know, which gets a heal as a tier 8 cruiser. And amazing stealth and good torps. This ship really doesn't have a lot of things that set it apart. Uh, 119,000 damage. That's, I think, the best game I've had so far on this ship. It's To me, I just haven't quite gotten the groove of it. Slowly but surely, though, we'll hopefully get there. Uh, surprisingly, we did top the team's score with 1,598 base experience. No medals, nothing like that. Again, hopefully this is the most boring game that I put on my channel. Um, I did want to get a hood review out soon, though. That way people could start making up their minds. Maybe they'd watch this and see. 119,000 damage, as I mentioned. All of it was the main battery. I only landed 11 secondary hits uh, out of 38 fired, but none of them did any damage. We took 112,000 damage. Most of it was artillery. There were a lot of battleships in this game. Uh, 9,000 damages from a torpedo, fires did 12,000, which is kind of surprising because usually I get burned a lot more in the ship. It kind of goes up like matchsticks, really. It, it seems like the ship, similar to the War Spite, has, uh, well, it, it it's easy to set on fire, I feel like, anyways. Uh, 350,000 credits, I'm not using my military month flag. Again, I wanted to get a review for the ship out soon. Uh, so, um, when I picked up the dreaded bundle for the hood, it has its own flag, so I figured, well, we'll put the nice little hood flag on it at least. 3,596 ship experience, 180 free experience. Again, nothing special here. If you had a great game in it, I am fully confident that you could get a lot more credits and a lot more experience. Anyways, let's go on to the build. So here we are in port. I'm going to try and go through this quickly because I do have a bit to talk about. Uh, you have, I, I wanted to go over the camouflage here real quick because you actually, if you do the campaign uh, and you finish it, you'll actually have a choice between four different camouflages. And, and cam camouflages. This is the one that it will originally come equipped with, I believe. It's a kind of a gray and then another darker gray area coating parts of the ship. I don't like it as much as this other one here, the full-on just plain Jane Grey here. I really like this one quite a bit. I think it looks nice. It's nice and clean. There's not a lot of rust, which I know a lot of people hate seeing rust on some of these ships. It seems like a really nice camouflage to me. Then, earnable camouflages, similar to the Bismarck campaign. You can earn camouflages for the hood, just like you can earn it for the, the uh, Bismarck. And supposedly this is the one that it went to uh, fight the Bismarck with. I don't know how accurate that is, but it looks a lot like the Arizona, which I never really liked the Arizona camo uh, to each his or her own. And then, of course, it wouldn't be complete without having a nice distressed version of that camo. So I thought it was kind of cool. There's a big hole back here. And, that might be where the uh, the shell that caused the magazine to detonate would have entered. I think that's where it was. Um, I think that's where I read that it entered was somewhere back here. So it's kind of cool that they have a hole right there. We're gaming doing a fairly nice job of that. Let's put on my gray camo and let's go on to the consumables. Now, I did not mention this in the battle at all, so I apologize on that. Uh, but you have access to defensive AA fire too. You probably saw it in the bottom of the screen. And uh, before I forget, get all of these premium. You are in a tier 7 premium. So even though I didn't make a lot that match, you should be fine to run all these premium. Um, but defensive fire AA2, it's different from the normal defensive fire. It's active for a full minute. But instead of buffing the, uh, the all of your AA guns, it only buffs these little bitty rockets here. However, to make up for the fact that it only buffs the rockets, it gives them a huge damage buff that's more 
uh, than the normal damage buff it would give on the regular defensive AA fire. So pretty nice there. They only have a stock range of 1.5 kilometers. I don't have AFT yet or else that would be, I think like 2.1 or something maybe. Not quite sure. I'm just throwing out numbers here. I'm not good at math, so please don't quote me on that. But it would be a little more helpful with AFT. Uh, the big thing to remember about this, the big takeaway, I guess, factor is not really good for helping teammates out. Great for helping yourself. So, yeah. They are still gimmicky, though. Uh, just because of the range and CVs who alt drop are going to be able to, if they want to, drop a little further back. Anyways, for the upgrades, main armaments mod 1, keep your turrets healthy. Second slot, aiming systems modification 1, if you want to help against the, or ward off the inaccuracy of these guns, go ahead and get that. If you really want to try out uh, maximizing the effectiveness of these rockets, I guess get the AA guns mod 2, but as uh, little as I see carriers in this ship, I would just much rather have the extra accuracy all the time. Slot 3, Damage Control System Mod 1, no other choice for a battleship really. And Steering Gears Mod 2 in the 4th slot, that's going to help out a lot because you do have a 910 meter turning circle radius, but with this modification you drop your rudder shift time, time down to 10.7 seconds. So it evens out a little bit in terms of reaction time. It's almost like the opposite of the War Spite, which is kind of funny because the we pull her up here the war spite um well i guess the war spite's rudder shift is only 11.3 with the same mod uh but the war spite i remember used to have a longer rudder shift i felt like and it just has this great turning circle of 550 hood not so much so you want that rudder shift moving to the captain preventative maintenance in the first slot again to help out your turrets and whatnot in the second slot, I have Expert Marksman. I like it a little more than Adrenaline Rush, but the turrets do turn fairly quickly, so whichever one you prefer here. Again, I like Expert Marksman more, though, so that's what I picked. After that, Superintendent. Following that, I picked Concealment Expert. After that, I'm going to get AFT to help out with those little bitty rockets and whatnot. And finally, I'll probably end up going for Fire Prevention, just to have... A little bit more protection against HE spamming cruisers trying to burn me to death. You didn't really see it this game, but I feel like I get set on fire a lot in the hood. So that would help out quite a bit versus that. Uh, anyways though, I guess I kind of want to give a little bit of a verdict on this ship. Because a lot of people have heard mixed reviews on this. And I'll just kind of give you my input. If I could go back and make the decision again, I think I'd still get hood. But I would wait for the uh, the little bundle to be nothing. You know, I, I wouldn't get it necessarily with the bundle, uh, with all the premium time and things. I would just, I think I would get it unbundled, is what I'm trying to say. It's not a great ship. It's not a bad ship. It certainly is fun. I've had a lot of fun games in it. I've never had a stellar game in it, but I do enjoy playing it. And for those of you who are fans of the Royal Navy, you're probably going to want it anyways. So I don't think you'll be terribly disappointed. I think it really does just come down to trying to learn how the ship plays. And once I get that figured out, and once you get that figured out, I think you'll enjoy it. And I think I will too. But anyways, guys, I'm going to stop rambling here. I will throw this out. I have a busy week ahead, so I'm not 100% sure if we'll have another video next weekend. I'll try my best. Um, but don't expect one necessarily, or don't be shocked if there isn't one. I apologize in advance if that becomes the case, but life kind of happens. I've got a friend that uh, is moving back across the pond to Europe, so we're having some going away stuff for her and uh no promises that i'll end up getting a game to show you guys anyways i hope you guys have enjoyed the video i hope you guys have stuck around long enough because it wasn't exactly the most riveting gameplay but for those of you who have stuck around long enough thank you you guys have a wonderful day i'll catch you next time this is a steaming pile of ship signing off